Welcome everyone. This is the next webinar from Sony Healthcare entitled Challenges in Medical Education and Training today. Thank you for joining us. We hope everyone is staying safe and healthy. Today we're going to review the role of Sony's nucleus platform in educational applications. The challenges today in the world of medical education are many. The latest medical technology from Sony helps combat the situation. Specifically today, we will review the many features and benefits of our advanced network-based nucleus system that can be utilized to enhance safety, maintain distance, create and manage secure offline content, all of which, unlike any other time before, translates to operational efficiency. I'm Dave Alexander, Marketing Manager, Integration Products here at Sony. Presenting today is Paul Nunez, Nucleus Integration Architect, Managing Systems and Deployment. On our distinguished panel today of moderating Q&A, we have Shogo Obuchi, Core Development Engineer of the Nucleus Platform, Marco Manares, Senior at Network Applications Specialist, and as always, we're pleased to have Senior Manager of Solutions Engineering at Sony Healthcare, Mark Barron, on the call. One very important note for discussion and Q&A purposes, please do use the on-screen utility to submit any items. Any items that we can't get to today, we will indeed respond directly after the session. We do encourage you to take advantage of the opportunity with the engineers today, and also please do download the Nucleus brochure and the additional information that's available on screen. The COVID-19 pandemic has drastically changed the way we teach and learn. The pandemic forced institutions and students to quickly implement distance learning via digital platforms due to social distancing. This trend existed prior to the pandemic as demand was rising for more digital options and flexible access to education. But the pandemic certainly accelerated the adoption of technology that supports distance learning. Not only will the pandemic continue this trend in 2021, but many of the resulting changes will continue to be demanded post-pandemic. They are indeed the new normal. EdTech was a buzzword even before the pandemic, but now it is top of mind at all teaching institutions. The Association for Educational Communications and Technology, AECT, has defined EdTech as facilitating learning and improving performance by creating, using, and managing appropriate technological processes and resources. A simpler definition is the process of integrating technology into education to build better teaching and learning experiences that result in higher learning outcomes. With a positive outlook, this crisis can be viewed as a sort of bypass button for the application of technological processes and thought patterns that would have taken many more years to adopt in the time of relative peace. One could say that a positive takeaway from disaster is its recurring ability to turn something once viewed as impossible into an accepted aspect of a new reality. The Forbes consensus amongst top facilities and planners concludes that now that we have had a leap in technology, forced or not, now is the time to keep forging ahead and build upon that which we have developed and invested in, continue to strengthen. Nucleus enables innovative multimedia teaching approaches, content management, a large part of the platform. With that comes collaborative learning, an increase to student access to clinical spaces via virtual attendance to surgical procedures. And Nucleus, of course, improves access to the clinical content, such as minimally invasive surgical, still in video images, and other related patient data. You'll learn later in the webinar from Paul specifically how Nucleus enables these capabilities. We wanna make sure that you understand the baseline in terms of what Nucleus is. And really, it represents the modern means by which to provide and manage enterprise-based integration. Since it is a modular software-based platform, not only does it have an unparalleled ability to provide traditional integration functionality, but it is actually modular. And the platform is by design more efficient. Simply stated, Nucleus system profiles are custom created based on the application. Its enterprise applications on the collaboration side provide robust connectivity 
in perfect sync with the new paradigm of 2021 and beyond. But at its core, this is what it's all about. New means and levels of connectivity. Connecting without being in the same room on an as needed agile platform. Connecting people with information and more importantly, people with people. It's done in a very simple method in terms of the hardware. Essentially with Nucleus, video information or data, if you will, becomes shareable, connectable with the introduction of one small system interface unit. To add to the speed, simplicity, and cost effectiveness of Nucleus, the system is geared to utilize existing data cabling and infrastructure. I'll repeat that, existing data infrastructure. An interface unit and a data drop, that's all you need. Many times the small amount of standard data drops needed to deploy a Nucleus system already exist in a room, sitting there, unused. And with that, a network-based approach and product, many tangible benefits result. Lower costs, you probably could stop the presentation right there. Faster implementations, little or no hardware taking up space and gathering dust in your ORs or elsewhere. Perfect for peds, neuro, spine rooms. And Nucleus features are totally compatible with all vendors and modalities. We are completely vendor neutral. As a result of the actual platform system approach, Nucleus is expandable, <clears throat> configurable quickly, and can equip any room in any application. Nucleus is unlimited in the number of sources and displays it can serve within a room. Unlimited. That means simple rooms with just one source, all the way through to the most complex hybrid or interventional radiology suite can all be accommodated easily by design with Nucleus. Systems can therefore run the gambit from only a recording system to powering the most complex connected ORs with robust collaboration, streaming, content management capabilities. And you can add or subtract features, move and or reconfigure rooms quickly easily. The true definition of agility. Once a system is installed, there's little or nothing to maintain for biomed or IT. System Watch is a unique component of Nucleus. Having a network-based product changes the paradigm of service itself. Proactive service, online maintenance, this is the new normal. At least it is from Sony. Little or no physical technicians on site ever Again, there's very little actual hardware with Nucleus. And although we can't claim that response time is immediate, the tools under our comprehensive system watch program ensure that several sets of eyes are on each system all the time, thus reducing the burden on biomed and IT. The purpose of Nucleus is to maintain distance yet assure connectivity in the educational space. Broaden the academic audience safely Record, edit, and access content securely. Maintain distance, protect students and staff. Reduce unnecessary waste of PPE. Utilize efficient access to centralized courseware. Content management, again, a key feature. Support new workflows with new efficiencies. This is what happens with Nucleus. As you realize connectivity is one click away, directly. Since teaching institutions rarely have the same budgets as many larger commercial institutions, Nucleus is designed as one way to help bridge the gap and reduce the typical strain on resources that traditional systems represent. At this point, for some additional insight, I'd like to hand it over to Paul Nunez. Paul, again, has a wealth of knowledge to share based on industry experience, Nucleus field experience, and a deep understanding of the application. Paul, over to you. Well done, David, thank you. The Nucleus Digital Imaging Platform is uniquely suited for healthcare education. Whether it's a university hospital caring for live patients or a simulation center focusing on procedural training for surgery residents, Nucleus makes the entire process of capturing and sharing content extremely easy 
so educators can focus on patients and students. I'm Paul Nunez with Sony Healthcare, and today I'm going to take you on a deeper dive of some of the elements of Nucleus to show you the major hardware components, the user interface, and the process of creating and sharing content. Nucleus revolutionizes the way students and staff create and access valuable medical video content. The platform is scalable and leverages the existing hospital network infrastructure to connect clinical spaces, teaching spaces, doctor's offices, and more. Nucleus features simple, intuitive controls that let staff focus on patient care and education rather than the video integration system. You can stream medical video directly into training suites with two-way audio and annotation so everyone can share opinions during the procedure. We care about the patient experience as much as you do, so we've designed Nucleus to be software-based with regular updates that optimize the system and add new and exciting features. One of the most defining features of Nucleus is the ability to send very high quality video and audio over the existing hospital network using tried and true internet protocol or video over IP. We use the existing hospital network as the transport instead of running point to point dedicated video cables from each source to each display. And we leverage the features of most network switches to keep all that network traffic in the OR so there's no chance that video from OR1 will end up on a switch somewhere else on the network. As you can imagine, in most cases, this results in much less infrastructure cost, both for existing ORs or new construction. You don't need dedicated conduit or a dedicated space to enclose all that AV equipment. And you don't have to design a traditional video switch for a particular set of inputs or outputs. A number of years ago, I worked for a medical video integration company that made a 16 by 16 video switch. 16 sources or inputs and 16 displays or outputs. The problem with that is while designing a room, if I had 17 sources and only two displays, I could not repurpose one of my unused displays as an input. I would need to deploy a second switch at a very high cost, which would mostly go unused. Nucleus eliminates that problem. Any port on the switch can be an input, an output, or even repurposed entirely if necessary. The Nucleus IPC, or IP converter, is the heart of the integration system. There are plenty of video over IP encoders on the market today, but Nucleus was designed specifically for healthcare. It's FDA approved and designed to connect to all clinical modalities that the user wishes to capture or broadcast. The modality IPC supports resolutions from composite all the way to 4K, as well as 3D video, and features video standards commonly used in clinical modalities. The display IPC, shown here on the right, comes with a special enclosure that allows it to connect directly on the back of any display that supports a VESA mount. Each IPC connects to the hospital network via a standard RJ45 network jack or via fiber. We support resolutions of up to 4K on standard copper network cables, so in most cases, it isn't necessary to upgrade the network infrastructure in the OR. This is the extent of the hardware footprint in the OR. One IPC for each modality and one IPC for each display. To help you visualize the platform in a typical suite, I've mocked up this slide with a single modality, in this case a microscope, a single wall display, and a PTZ camera in the ceiling. Our user interface touch panel is right there on the right. The Nucleus IPC connects to the microscope and then to the network jack on the wall. The IPC is not to scale in this slide, but I wanted to show it large enough so you could see it. As I mentioned, it's connected to each video modality, and a display IPC is connected at the back of each display. That touch panel on the right of the screen controls the entire system. The touch panel is intuitive and easy to use. It shows all the modalities that are connected in the room. In this example, we have six devices connected. It can start and stop the capture of an intervention, 
switch the right image to the right display, initiate a timeout, and broadcast any source to a remote viewer. Any source can be recorded by touching the record button shown here in red, or the image capture buttons in blue. Multiple sources can be captured simultaneously and are available for preview within just a few minutes of the end of the case. The touch panel can live on the nurse desk, it can be mounted on a wall, or if necessary, it can be eliminated altogether and the entire user interface can be controlled from any web browser. So for example, a nurse computer that has Internet Explorer or Chrome can have a tab open that completely controls Nucleus in that room. We can also automate the recording process so the recording begins as soon as the intervention starts or with a touch of a foot pedal. Nucleus uses one-touch routing to send clinical video to displays within the OR. Simply use the touch panel to select where the source and the display intersect, and the image is instantly sent to that display. Any display can be set up to show a single image, two images side by side, picture in picture, or if the display is large enough, quad or four images can be shown. This method of showing multiple images on one display can be especially helpful in a teaching environment where the student is in a remote location. In the case of a hybrid suite, we can send the imaging display in its entirety, showing all the tiles the physician needs to perform the procedure. With Nucleus, you see what the physician sees. The Nucleus Content Management System includes powerful editing tools that allow healthcare professionals to create meaningful content to share with their peers or students. There's no need to download a large video file onto removable media or use third-party editing software, which can often be cumbersome to install and manage on a hospital PC. Our Content Management System allows you to easily locate, playback, and edit content by simply using the web browser that's already available on your hospital PC. Capturing an image during video recording automatically creates a bookmark on the video timeline so you can get to that spot in the video with ease. You can quickly scrub through hours of video and select only those moments that are most important to you. Once all your edits are done, you can create a new, smaller file that stitches all your edits together or save an individual file for every segment you edited. Your edited work can then be stored back into the patient file, a VNA or PAC system, or downloaded to removable media. The original content is always preserved and secured, should you need to re-edit your original content at a later time. Only those users with proper credentials can access and download content. Access to Nucleus content outside the campus is also possible with VPN options provided by your IT department. Nucleus supports data lifecycle management, so you are in control of how long your content remains on the network. Broadcast allows you to share live medical video and audio securely over the network and access feeds from anywhere in the hospital. This is especially useful in teaching institutions which allow students to be virtually present during the case. If there's a pan tilt zoom camera in the OR, remote viewers can be permitted to control the camera for an even more immersive experience. To start a broadcast, simply select the source and tap on the broadcast button, which will then light up the broadcast icon on every display in the room where that source is routed. Multiple video sources can be streamed to local clinical teams, classrooms, sim labs, or any authorized location. Once the procedure is finished, the broadcast ends automatically or can be ended sooner by touching the broadcast button again. Annotation brings another level of functionality to Nucleus by allowing staff to mark up and add notes to any type of medical content. It's ideal for real-time consultation with instructors and physicians outside the OR. Annotations can enhance collaboration by allowing one or multiple remote users to simultaneously annotate, draw, or highlight areas of interest in live video. 
Nucleus Annotation requires no additional hardware and can function using a tablet, a touch-enabled PC, or the mouse and keyboard on a standard PC. Nucleus is compatible with most medical video devices like video displays, cameras, endoscopy equipment, ultrasound equipment, imaging equipment, and more. We support video products from a wide range of manufacturers and applications. So in most cases, there's no need to upgrade the existing hardware. If you currently have Sony products, such as cameras or displays, Nucleus is designed to work seamlessly with those devices. Nucleus is the ultimate collaboration tool for webinars or live symposiums. It allows your best clinical minds to communicate and share innovative techniques and real-time insights in a highly engaged setting, utilizing one or more clinical spaces. There is usually no need to bring AV resources into the OR, and the entire production can be controlled and moderated remotely. In-person and remote attendees have the ability to ask questions and receive expert advice in a real-time setting. And the entire interaction can be recorded for later use. In this example, we have three ORs performing surgeries for the target audience. One individual, perhaps sitting at the back of the conference room, has a remote access to the Nucleus system. The moderator, standing up there at the podium, can tee up the next patient, prompting the PTZ camera in the OR to be broadcast for physician introductions and perhaps a slide showing patient information. Afterwards, the clinical views are broadcast as the physician walks the attendees through the case. As that case is finishing up, the moderator can request a view of the next room and so forth. Many teaching hospitals are already using some form of audio video collaboration for their students and Nucleus makes the whole process easy and affordable. Every Nucleus installation includes System Watch, our remote monitoring system. The same system used to monitor our professional broadcast equipment deployed throughout Major League Sports and the movie industry. With System Watch, we monitor all major elements of the Nucleus system all the way down to the individual IPC in the OR. Should a problem occur, we can quickly determine the cause and alert your clinical engineering or IT department so measures can be taken to resolve the issue without it affecting patient care. Our monitoring center is based in the United States and online 24 seven, so you can rest easy that your Nucleus system will be ready when you are. We focused on Nucleus for healthcare education and content creation in this webinar. Nucleus can do much more. With Nucleus, you decide what you need today and grow the system as your educational needs grow. Once it's installed on your network, it seamlessly integrates with all clinical and non-clinical spaces, conference rooms, other ORs, pathology and wet labs, simulation rooms, and doctor's offices. Not only is integrating in a teaching hospital possible, with Nucleus we make it easy. If you're a healthcare provider and you don't have the room or budget for a large infrastructure project, but you need this functionality, reach out to us and we'll be happy to provide a personalized demo or set up a proof of concept to see if Nucleus is right for you. It was my pleasure to present Nucleus to you today. We can now open it up for questions. Thank you. I'm Mark Barron. Uh, I'm a senior manager here at Sony, uh, managing the uh, products uh, of which Nucleus is one of them, joined by Marco uh, Manjares, who is our senior support engineer. So feel free to start filling in your questions on the uh, question tab within the GoToWebinar. We do have a couple of questions here. Um, I'm gonna throw this one out to Marco. Marco, what video resolutions are supported within the system? Uh, currently, uh, all the way up to 4K, 1080. Um, so we're ready to uh, to support anything that it's available in the current uh, market and just to reiterate on that we, we go all the way down to the old analog so s video composite video uh, and we also support all the different types of connectors vga rgb um, s video um, sdi etc 
Uh, Marco, another one for you. Is there a limit to the number of modalities that can be connected? Uh, no, uh, as long as you have an open port on your network, uh, we are able to connect any modalities. So it's, uh, it's an easy way to scale in your hospital. Uh, if, uh, if you have a need or you're bringing in uh, a different modality into a room, as long as there's a network port available, you're ready to go. Yeah, it's different than what is typically uh, in some of the other systems where they use baseband video. You have to find a correct video connector to connect to, and you're usually limited to the number of inputs and outputs you have. Whereas with ours, every IP converter that we have in the system is able to be recorded or streamed. Another one, uh, can this be used with wireless monitors? Yeah, um, we don't care what the type of technology it is. We can use it with wireless monitors. Um, all, all we ask is that we just have a connection um, to to the uh, you know, to the wall jack. So the the monitor could be wireless, but our IPC cannot use wireless only because of the bandwidth that we're talking about uh, within the hospital OR itself. Uh, the bandwidth are way past uh, what wireless can support. Um, Marco, again, can Nucleus interact with the PAC system? Absolutely. One of the many features that we have is that we can interact with a PAC system, with uh, his systems. We use uh, LDAP for uh, user authentication. The idea behind this system is that we want to make sure that we are the core of the clinical, the intervention, uh, the educational portion of it. And by, in order to achieve that, we have to be able to talk to all these dispersed servers and be able to communicate and provide feedback and data to each one of them. Okay, and in addition to PACs, you know, electronic health records, modality work list, DICOM, uh, all those things are, are what we typically connect to within the hospital network. Uh, is the recorded content encrypted for security and HIPAA compliance? So anything that leaves the OR is uh, uh, actually encrypted through transmission. Uh, so anything that goes from either OR to OR, OR to uh, auditorium, or even OR to the, uh, the storage um, uh, storage system, the NAS or the, um, the SAN that you might be connecting to is encrypted. Uh, we use 128-bit uh, uh, encryption, which certainly falls within the parameters of what HIPAA expects. Uh, is there any other questions out there? Seems like everybody's a little bit shy to ask questions. David, did you have anything further that you wanted to add? On the existing infrastructure, as far as uh, comparison goes, again, the main benefit nucleus is that it's not reliant on fiber optics. You can work with it, but it's not a requirement for this system. Again, that aids in the speed of deployment, reduces costs um, without video cabling or fiber optic cabling being a requirement. Um, all those electrical requirements go away and electrical costs and labor go away. So this is, you know, aids, of course, in nucleus being applicable to a retrofit situation, not necessarily only a renovation or new construction project. It means that if you want to record only with one network drop in one box, uh, no cables to pull, you can set up a complete centralized content management system. Uh, the system can even be set to record automatically just you know, by connecting a, a, a device or turning on your source. So uh, very important on the infrastructure side that our capabilities are understood. Uh, it's a tremendous benefit to budgets across the board. Well, that's correct. Um, a lot of the older hospitals, unless you're going to do a down to the studs renovation, uh, they're limited to what they have in the walls. And using the standard CAT6 cable, uh, we can do up to 4K. So uh, another question, there are no cable pulls required because the unit is wired to existing data jacks in the OR walls. Uh, Marco? Uh, that is correct. Uh, you're able to utilize that infrastructure. I mean, there's still some configuration that has to happen at the at the switcher level, at the switch level, uh, but we can utilize the existing physical infrastructure to connect our devices 
and use the existing network infrastructure to send the video from our devices to back into the servers or from each one of your medical modalities, a transmitter, to any of your displays to a receiver within that Nucleus uh, network. Yeah, and that's uh, one of the limitations in older uh, operating rooms is the number of wall jacks that they have. So as long as there are enough wall jacks, and typically they're fairly easy to run as a retrofit without having to tear down to the studs uh, if you're just going to run uh, copper cabling. Um, you know, we can, you know, every one of the inputs and what every one of the outputs needs to have uh, a data jack in order for the communications path to be open. Uh, still no more questions. Um, I don't know, David, if you wanted to have any closing comments. Um, I did only in that the, the one thing that I wanted to make sure we understood in terms of connectivity, um, this is the perfect way to connect, you know, pathology to a classroom. Um, this is a perfect way to connect a specialist from their office to the classroom. Not all content being shared with students needs to originate in the OR. Remember, this is a complete network-based collaboration platform. So individuals that are clinical from different areas can talk to other clinicians. Not necessarily just OR to students is uh, you know, complete flexibility in terms of how this is set up in the past with dedicated cable runs or dedicated fiber to the lecture hall none of that flexibility was, was in place. I want to make sure we're thinking beyond the OR for points of connectivity and really outside of the OR or where the content originally comes from, everything is browser-based so you can connect anywhere once you're authorized, of course. But that was it. You know, understanding that parameter isn't necessarily how folks think of integration. And you know, with this possibility, again, recording only systems, full blown IR suites, everything in between can be accommodated. So along that, we have a question. Can you address surgery centers and small installs? So Marco, can you address how we can scale up or down? Uh, yes, absolutely. I mean, um, depending on how the network is set up, remember that everything is based on uh, on the network infrastructure. If the uh, uh, if the ASCs, if those surgery centers um, are connected back to the central hospital, then the video that it's recorded will travel back to the central hospital. The high quality video, the, the beauty of our system is the high quality, low latency video stays within that um, one operating room. It doesn't really leave that ASC. So we're not really utilizing a lot of bandwidth back and forth while still providing you really high quality images uh, for any of the applications. If you start going, you know, extremely large number of ASCs, then, you know, it's probably worth it to create different clusters, which we can also do. So you partition your entire physical locations into multiple clusters, uh, geographically located, and then you can also determine where are you sending that video and maximize your bandwidth. The beauty of this software is that you know, the, the fact that we rely on the network, which is a, a, a true technology that has been proven as it's used for a number of different applications, will allow us to also maximize that same network to achieve what we need to achieve for that clinic, the education, any any of those sorts of applications. Right. So just to, to piggyback onto that as far as ASCs, where it's usually are much smaller and, and probably have lower cost uh, budgets uh, for that. So we can scale our servers up and down um, based on the needs of the customer. So if they just have a few uh, operating rooms or maybe they're not using all the necessary tools that we offer. So uh, most ASCs are just going to be doing recording. Uh, they're probably not going to be doing switching and routing. So when we do a site analysis, we'll look at the, the system that they have or the, the needs that they have and we'll uh, architect the proper system for them. Uh, and based on that, we can use much smaller uh, servers, uh, which are gonna be you know, lower cost. Uh, and also there's the need for switching and routing and, and the different tools that they may or may not need. Uh, again, it's a menu system. So you can choose to do switching and routing only, or you can do switching, routing and uh, broadcasting and streaming. 
Uh, so based on that, we can uh, tailor it specifically to the lower or the, the larger installs. Uh, where is the recorded data stored? Is it locally in the hospital server or in the cloud? Marco, another one for you. Uh, so what our system need is basically a shared folder, uh, whether it is locally in a server farm, as long as we have that share pad and we can reach it from the, the server, then that's where the data will reside. It's, it's completely up to the hospital to, to determine where that data will reside. Uh, that way they can also apply any disaster recovery, encryption arrest, and a number of other policies that they'll probably um, you know, already have in place at that, at that point. Right, so yeah, our, we, our, oh, sorry, David. We, we do have one um, application that's almost, uh, it's like a hybrid sim lab private practice that's not connected to a larger facility. And you know, they use their own local storage method. It's like a baby sand that they developed on site. Um, who again, as, as Marco pointed out, you know, our data can go anywhere. We just have to know where to point it and where you'd like to manage it. Right. Yeah, I was just going to say that you know ours, you know, the nucleus is a tool. Uh, we give the hospital the flexibility to where they want to store it, um, whether that is in the cloud or whether it's uh, you know locally on premise. Um, how does this work with an IDN, multi-level, -le uh, multiple hospitals and AOCs? Uh, we currently work with quite a few IDNs. Um, we started with one. You know, the, usually the uh, tertiary care center and branched out to the other ones, as long as they're on the same network or able to be reached within the same network, uh, we can maintain uh, a centralized location in a data center, uh, and then all the other hospitals feed into that. Marco, did you want to add anything to that? Uh, same idea as we talked about the multiple ASCs. Um, you know, the, the beauty of the system is, you know, network connectivity, which already exists for a lot of those locations. Um, high quality images will remain within those smaller locations and, you know, proxies or, or, you know, smaller, more compressed images will travel across the network to be a store wherever that hospital decides that that information needs to reside. Yeah, these, these hospitals usually have very large pipes uh, between them. Uh, so we're uh, relatively small, uh, as Marco had mentioned. Uh, the, the files that travel between centers or between uh, operating rooms or from operating rooms, auditoriums or classrooms are much smaller than baseband video would allow. Uh, you know, if you're talking about uh, a typical stream of high def, it's, it's up to 18 gigabits per second, uh, which would choke most of the networks out there. Uh, ours, we can scale down to a much lower bandwidth so that it's uh, very flexible when you're moving that, that kind of data around between different centers. Okay, no more questions. Last chance out there to input your data. Yeah, do please do that if you had a question, even if it's uh, you know roughly worded, get it in there. We'll get back with you. Uh, have you approached working with a centralized ICU? Uh, actually, in this era of COVID, we've addressed exactly this use case. Um, we're working with a large IDN that are virtualizing their ICU, not only for efficiency's sake, but also for the pandemic's sake, keeping nurses from going in and out of rooms unnecessarily. Uh, they've done with uh, their, their terming a virtualized ICU where they have a hub managed by a nurse, a respiratory therapist, and a doctor uh, monitoring up to 64 rooms from a central location. Uh, and it's been very, very effective at this point. Uh, it's something that is, is really starting to uh, catch on. Uh, the next step in this project would be outfit every, every room with a camera. Therefore, every med surge room could essentially be uh, its own ICU. Um, because in pandemic, as we know, a lot of the ICU beds were filled uh, and they had to find other ways of, of branching out from that. Uh, do you end up needing or working with upgrading peripherals? Um, not sure I understand uh, exactly what you mean. Uh, as far as upgrading the peripherals, are you talking about the network base? Or are we talking about the endpoints? Um, most hospitals today, 
typically in an operating room, we're talking about endoscopy. Endoscopy could be anywhere really from uh, HD up through 4K at this point. Uh, so uh, from that perspective, uh, we can handle that. The monitors themselves, monitors, um, you know, as long as they can handle whatever the, the video input is, um, it, we can work. Uh, even if it was down, to, you know, I still go into ORs and I still see some of our CRTs in the rooms. You know, I wouldn't want to, but yes, it could essentially work with that technology. We can we can connect to one of those existing monitors via composite video, um, but it'll work with any modality or any manufacturer's monitors. Uh, regarding printers, uh, we have specific printers that we use. Um, but essentially, it's really just network printing. We can just take that information and send it to, you know, for instance, a, an HP network printer, uh, if that was, was the use case. Um, how long do these projects take to review and then install? Marco or David? Marco first. Um, <laughs> it varies depending on the type of project, but, um, uh, you know, the, the initial steps probably it'll take a good three to four weeks to actually determine everything that is needed from, uh, you know, the infrastructure networking uh, components that we need. Uh, it'll get turned to uh, the customer and probably David can address that in a, in a much better way. And I mean, in that sense, you know, the, the rest of the process is actually very fast. You imagine the on-site for these types of installations is short and sweet with, without a large infrastructure project going on. Um, granted, some ORs, you know, have background music and microphone speakers and amplifiers to hear the far end and collaborating. So we provide all of that. That's a you know, fast install compared to the old cable plant for video switching that used to be a part of things. So it's relatively quick is the answer. And as Marco mentioned, um, you know, it's based on the application. Places with no audio, you know, literally you can have an interface box connected to a modality. And once the, the back end is set up to run, uh, you are working in, in, in minutes. Yeah, we're, we're typically working with off the shelf products uh, from the network side of things. So we buy off the shelf servers. There's really nothing special about them. So they're not long lead items. Uh, we, uh, in the best case scenario, we will marry the hardware and the software. We'll do the testing and then we'll ship on site those servers. Uh, once they get racked and stacked, the infrastructure side or the physical part of the installation within the operating room itself is relatively easy. As I said, each one of these modalities or endpoints has an IPC or IP converter. They're about the size of a cigar box. So we just have to find places to put them, either mount them behind the monitors or mount them on the, on the endoscopic uh, cart, um, and then just connect them to a wall jack power and uh, the video baseband. So that, that part of it does not take very long at all. We don't need to be in the OR for long periods of time as you would if you were gonna be putting in a full rack of equipment. Um, David, one for you, uh, equipment warranty. So it's uh, generally in sync with the rest of our medical products, two years, three years, There's some individual variations from box to box because we have a lot of different pieces of hardware that comprise a system, um, but two years on most, three years on some is really the answer. The system watch agreement that's in place full time also keeps an eye on, on all of the components within the system that are monitored. And of course, that's all the core products. So you might get a couple of years, but you actually get, you know, the bulk of every day with eyes on every box. Yeah, as Paul alluded to in his uh, presentation, uh, System Watch is our service license agreement that we have, which is uh, the software is monitoring the system, uh, over 200 touch points on the system um, at, a, at every second uh, granularity. Uh, we will get an email to our network operations center, which is manned up to 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, and then once they get that alert, uh, they'll immediately start contacting uh, the end user uh, and see if they can troubleshoot remotely uh, and get the, the system up and running as quickly as possible. So that's one of the recurring, uh, the service license agreement is, is a recurring expense. Every year, uh, the customer would sign on for that. In addition to getting that system watch, it also gives them uh, feature upgrades. Uh, we do feature upgrades twice a year. 
so as we listen to the marketplace, we are always coming up with new features, uh, adding them to the system. And that's part of the service license agreement that we would uh, automatically update and upgrade the system to the latest uh, technology and software. Yeah, and those, those are not updates, but other features that Mark's referencing that are you know particularly applicable to education is we have things like rotation correction so that if you're using a rigid scope, the image will stay you know, parallel to the horizon. Uh, we have things that let you adjust the resolution of images on the fly. Um, very, you know, very much a series of additional tools that you can add if desired um, and they apply to your application, Mela Education. If you don't want those features, you don't have to have those features as well. Um, again, the, the configurability factor here is high and that you know lets you save money, stretch that budget, spend it where you need to. Yeah, I think also what the asker was uh, uh, alluding to was uh, licensing fees. And uh, as far as the licensing is concerned, once you buy the system, you own the system, there's no per seat license uh, uh, basis. There's no additional, um, if you add more seats or more people, uh, there's no ongoing cost as far as that's concerned. Uh, you buy it, you own the system. The only thing is that in order to maintain the system, we need to have remote access to it. Uh, that's the way we, we maintain the system repair and troubleshoot it. Uh, so there is a, a cost for installation. We do, we'll go out there and work with our systems integrators uh, to determine, as I said, uh, you know, we'll look at the site, we'll uh, determine the architecture, we'll come up with uh, the needs that they have, address those with hardware and software, uh, and then put together a package that includes installation and training. And so none of the line item licenses required for individual functions are recurring costs, none of them, only the SLA, very important. Okay, great. Oh, what I have on my side, David? That was it, appreciate it. Marco, anything else? I think we cover, um, you know, most of what what it was intended so yeah the only thing that i would uh, mention if there's any further information that you need about a specific uh, uh, proposition rfp or a, a job project that you're working on uh, please reach out to uh, to us we can assign a, an account manager to you and they can talk further about uh, you know costs and uh, installations and, and timetables and things like that absolutely great well thank you everyone thanks for attending Thanks everyone for their time today, greatly appreciate it.